All right, so we're checking out the uh, NV T14 uh, mini electric folding bike. So this one is uh, pretty similar to one that I've owned for um, probably about a year now, but I never did a review because they just continue the model is the uh, X5S. Basically, this is um, very similar. Uh, I'm not going to go all over all the differences, obviously, the other models. Uh, no longer being produced um, but yeah that one didn't have a chain this one has a chain of course here is a uh, single gear so uh, not the greatest for going up hills and stuff like that on level surfaces it's okay so to cover all the uh, major specs here we have uh, 10 inch wheels we have a 350 watt uh, rear hub motor um, I think it bursts up to uh, 500 watts. We have a 10 amp hour 48 volt uh, battery. So I'll put the range specs here up on the screen. It's, it really, range really depends on uh, your terrain and how you're riding it, mostly throttle or pedaling. Uh, obviously, we have a folding mechanism here in the center to fold the bike in half. And then we have a mechanism here to bring the handlebar down as well as fold the handlebar down here to completely fold the bike down. The seat can be removable as well as the battery is removable as well. The seat's uh, quite cushy, much larger than on the older model. So this is in, and the, the ride in this one is pretty comfortable. So we have front shocks over here. There's no lockout or adjustment uh, as, as far as I can tell. And then we have three shocks here. So you have one here in the, in the center frame and then one here in the back and then on the other side as well in the rear side. So uh, going over curbs and or like not curbs, like small bumps and stuff like that. Very comfortable, very cushy seat and all of the shock absorbers. Uh, yeah, the ride's very, very nice. So in the back here, you've got this little seat. I'm not really sure if a person can sit back here or not, but uh, yeah, you can definitely put some stuff on here if you want. Uh, there's no rack. Uh, you have a reflector here in the back. You have plastic fenders, one here in the back for mud guard, basically, uh, for, for splashing water, and another plastic one in the front. Got a front headlight here, and that's turned on by the key. I'll show you here that in a second. Okay, so looking at the other side, uh, here you have the key for the battery and the charging port for the battery. We have a rear disc brake here, it's mechanical disc brake. And also in the front, another disc brake. And again, mechanical disc brake. Pedals do fold down. Uh, the handlebar here, this T-section is welded on, so you can't uh, actually remove that or adjust this. Uh, there's a little indentation here in the handlebar. You have to install it correctly, otherwise it'll be backwards. But um, yeah, the basically, if you put that in here correctly, the wheel should line up when you do the installation or the assembly. It comes pretty much all assembled in the box. You just have to put the handlebar in correctly and the seat. And I believe that's all I did and it was ready to go. So over here you have a key to turn on uh, the bike. So twist once. You get some lights here. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Shows your battery level. There's just three little blue dots here, and I'm on, I'm on two right now. And if you hit the key again, it turns the headlight on. And I'm not sure if that's it's daytime, so it's not super bright, uh, but that's how you turn the headlight on. So pretty simple. There's no fancy display or anything like that here. Um, pretty basic. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate here how to fold up the bike. Um, the bike is fairly heavy at about 65 pounds, so you're going to want to remove the battery. So uh, there's a little uh, lever in the back of the seat. Lift that up and pull the battery up and out. Of course, you want to make sure the uh, battery is unlocked. That's what the key is for. There's a little pin there. You want to turn the key and unlock it so you can remove the battery. The main hinge for folding the bike uh, has a small a spring safety mechanism, so you have to pull up on that so that it will release the latch, otherwise it won't fold. The hinge is a bit stiff, I think it's because the bike is fairly new, so, you know, being brand new and everything, it'll probably loosen up later if you fold the bike often, and uh, also the spring safety is also on the um, latch for the handlebar. 
And this is what it looks like all folded up with the pedals and everything folded up, no, bat uh, no battery and no seat. So here's a bit of footage of me uh, riding it around. Uh, basically, uh, mostly rode it on throttle only uh, with no pedaling. I think that's probably the easiest way to ride it. Um, it as you notice here, it, the bike is a bit small for my size. Yeah, I'm, I'm a six foot frame. So it's, uh, you know, I look very tiny on this bike, but I think obviously this bike is mainly uh, meant for portability uh, and, you know, transporting in like smaller vehicles, like a car trunk or something like that. Obviously, if you have a larger vehicle, you probably don't need anything this small. Also, I think uh, this is going to be more suited for like last mile commuters. And if you don't know what that means, it means kind of like, you know, um, ride the bike from your house or apartment to a bus stop, fold up the bike, uh, take the bike onto the bus with you, uh, go to your stop, you know, maybe your workplace or wherever you want to go, you know, get off the bus, whatever, train, etc. And then obviously unfold the bike and ride it to your final destination. So that's what a last mile bike is. And I think that's what this kind of falls into. And it's not really meant for ultra long rides, although the range on this is pretty good. You can ride it for a fairly long time, but I think it's mainly meant for the shorter commutes. And of course, with a fairly big battery, you, know, you do have a lot of range, so you don't have to charge it as often. As I said before, the ride's very comfortable, can handle, you know, small bumps and everything, no problem. Probably would be okay on some dirt paths, you know, not too rocky, fairly smooth. Uh, the tires, you know, are going to be mainly for, like, sidewalks, city streets, that kind of thing. That's kind of what this is intended for, so I wouldn't really use this for off-road use anyway. But, yeah, it can handle definitely plenty of bumps and stuff. It is, um, yeah, in terms of, like... You're worried about whether your uh, butt's going to be able to handle the uh, you know the bumps and stuff this is a very smooth ride from the front and rear suspension along with a very nice cushy seat so this bike you can also use the other two modes which is just uh, pedaling only with no motor uh, you just you know, you know have the bike turned off and uh, start pedaling it is not ideal for that the bike's fairly heavy it does take quite a bit of effort to get it to go I think it's probably better when you're uh, in riding it with the motor assist and uh, once you get up to speed it, it, you know uh, with a little bit of motor assist uh, the pedaling is fairly easy in fact uh, once you get to up to a certain speed like the motor kicks in and then once you get to like basically full speed you're unless you're really pedaling fast you're I don't think the pedaling is doing a whole lot of in terms of um, helping out the motor it's mostly the motor doing most of the work Anyway, overall, I think it's a pretty good bike, a pretty good value for the money. It's about $500 right now. Uh, I'm not, not sure if the price is going to stay that. It looks like it's a discounted price. There might be some coupon codes in the video description. Check it out in case you're interested in this. And as I said, you know, this is not for everybody. I think uh, in terms of uh, the size, it's probably better for smaller adults and definitely be fine for kids. And of course, I think it's going to be limited in terms of who it's for because it's got it's very I guess purpose driven in terms of being like sort of a last mile commuter type bike and not a general purpose bike. Anyway I hope you found the review helpful I've got a lot of other e-bike reviews I'll, I'll link a playlist down in the video description check out some of the bikes that I've reviewed in the past I'll have more e-bike reviews in the future so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on if you want to miss those. If you have any questions let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.